I'm Karen Winstead. I am a certified nurse midwife and I work at a freestanding birth center called New Life Birth Center in uh, Rocky Mount, Virginia. And uh, I've had experience as a labor and delivery nurse in the hospital setting for many years and um, then I've been working here in the birth center since uh, 2012. And when I first started at the birth center, I wasn't really sure about water births. I had taken some training on it, but you know, in the hospital, we just didn't do water births or even have tubs when I was in the hospital. Um, so it um, has been a learning curve. And I must say that I do enjoy water births now and can highly recommend them for women who um, are low risk and even in the hospital setting if they have tubs I definitely recommend you trying to labor in the tub if you can a lot of the hospitals nowadays have waterproof um, monitors and um, so even if you're on Pitocin being induced those kinds of things um, they can um, have you in the tub and um, on the monitor at the same time and so um, today I'm just going to show you some of the different um, tubs. We've got a couple of different tubs in our birth center, so I'll show you some photos of those and then talk about some of the pros and cons of um, water birth. And then um, hopefully if uh, you have any other questions, I'm going to leave you a couple of resources at the end of this presentation if you want to do a little more research on uh, water birth but come along with us and let's wade into water birth so this pool is one of our um, birth pool in a box uh, pools and we love it because it's got the soft sides and uh, we can get all the way around it it has a soft bottom and as you can see it is pretty deep and we like it to cover a woman's uh, belly uh, usually not uh, higher than uh, the top of your uh, breast so kind of where your ax axilla is um, we don't want it to be too high because we want to be able to pull that baby out and put it up on your chest without the baby um, getting back in the water so there is a limit as to how much water and then we also like to keep the water temperature between 95 and 100 and for some women that sounds a little cool but usually when you're in labor you're working hard and our moms often get hot uh, in the pool so we have a fan that we can bring and uh, cool them off a little bit and then we also use like cold washcloths um, to their face and to the back of their neck to cool them off but this is one of our um, most popular tubs and in fact this tub is actually larger the one in the picture is actually larger than the one we have now we found that women like to be able to put their feet against the side of the tub and the original birth pool in a box we had um, was a little too large for that so um, when that one wore out we went with a smaller version of that so anyway, that tells you a little bit about uh, birth pool in a box. So some of the things you have to think about if you want to do a water birth at your home is do you have well water? Do you have city water? How clean is your water? Uh, what type of water heater do you have? Um, we prefer the... Um, on-demand water heaters because they will uh, continuously provide the water that we need um, at the temperature we need it. Um, if you have a regular water heater that um, you know is set at like 110 um, and the water is sitting in it for a good amount of time before you use it, it is possible for bacteria to build up in some of those systems. So we use an on-demand water heater and we run that water for several minutes before we actually start filling the tub and um, we use a clean hose uh, that's a, a pot potable water hose um, to fill it with um, and 
usually um, with the particular tub that you're looking at now that does not have the heater in it, we have it situated so that it's close to a bathroom so that we can fill it uh, with hot water as we need to and sometimes we have to bail the colder water out and then put the hotter water in in order to keep it 95 to 100 degrees. So those are just some things to think about as far as water because I have had uh, people who went to use fill their tub and it took them several hours to fill their tub because their water heater was so small or because their well water didn't have enough uh, water to fill the tub and continue washing clothes or doing some of those other tasks of, of a household. So this particular type of tub in the, in the picture here is called an aqua doula and it has a heater in it so that it will keep the water warm once you put the warm water in it. So don't let it fool you. It will not heat the water up. You have to put the warm water in it first and then it will keep the water warm. Um, so that's one of the um, things that fooled us at first. Uh, this uh, tub, people like it. It doesn't have as soft of sides as the other one, but um, we don't get any complaints from either, either of our tubs. Um, it's larger, so if the partner wants to get in the water with uh, the laboring woman to help hold her up or rub her back or that kind of thing, this tub um, is large enough to do that comfortably. Um, as you can see in the picture, these uh, tubs are lined with a disposable liner. So all, both of our tubs, we line them with a disposable liner. We fill the water up um, and get it to the appropriate temperature, that 95 to 100 range. And then once you have the baby, we have a dirty hose and uh, pump that we pump that water back out and throw the liner away and clean the tub and it's ready to go again. So some of the other things to just pay attention to, um, non-slip surfaces because you're more likely to slip and fall down um, if you are on a wet floor. So just kind of pay attention to things like that. You know, most um, hospitals won't let you deliver in the tub. You can labor in the tub, but most of them are not set up for you to actually um, deliver in the tub. So. Um, but as midwives uh, work more in hospitals and are doing more water labor, um, we're starting to see some hospitals allow some water birth. So what happens uh, once the baby delivers in the water? Uh, we will put the baby up on the mom's chest and let them bond for uh, five minutes and get their pictures and that fun stuff and then after five minutes once the the blood has had time to go from the placenta into the baby's lungs um, we will uh, clamp and cut the cord and hand the baby off to dad and then dad and my assistant usually will be drying off the baby while I help mom out of the tub and um, usually mom will just squat right beside the tub and deliver that placenta and then we'll walk her on around to the bed. And if it doesn't deliver right then, we go, you know, just take her around to the bed and, and the placenta will usually deliver later. Um, why do I do that? It is because when that placenta comes out, that is the most likely time for you to have a large hemorrhage and bleed and pass out. And I do not want to be trying to stop your bleeding while I'm also trying to keep you from drowning. So we pretty much uh, just um, have moms get out after that first five minutes. And we like that first five minutes because we do believe it helps the baby get more of its own blood from the placenta. And that has really helped um, in uh, babies not having as many breathing problems um, as I used to see in the hospital setting. So I really am a, a strong proponent of uh, delayed cord clamping. Um, usually um, we also have to watch out because it gets slippery um, if the water's on the floor, but for the most part we uh, don't have a, a big problem with that. So on to the next slide. So 
So the big question that women ask me is, does being in that tub really help? And I would say yes. Um, the women tell me that it takes a lot of the weight off and makes them feel like they can float around and get in positions better. Um, it relaxes the muscles so that your body is not working uh, against your uterus, trying to use up all the energy in your other muscles. Um, and it also puts some pressure back um, on your skin as the baby is pushing out um, and pushing down. Um, the water pressure puts a little bit of pressure back. So that's uh, one of some of the ways that it helps. And then we can still do a lot of back pressure, counter pressure, and hip squeezes and massages and things like that too, even while you're in the tub. Um, the other thing that um, some of the studies show is that it definitely cuts down on episiotomies, which that's the, where they cut your bottom uh, to give the baby more room to get out. Um, and so um, we're not finding as many episiotomies and bad tears um, with water birth. And um, we don't tend to have to check our ladies' uh, cervix as much um, because um, it just seems like the, the, the water helps them to um, just dilate. Um, especially second and third time moms, it seems like it, it just kind of speeds things along. Um, if people are in the water too long, um, say they've been in there 45 minutes or an hour, uh, occasionally it will slow down contractions and we'll get people out and walk them around. But definitely having that ability to um, just move around more uh, does decrease the pain and having that uh, water definitely helps. So... If you look at this picture, you probably can't see it, but um, in this uh, birth, we brought the baby up out of the water uh, pretty quick. As you can see, everybody was excited, and there was a short cord, and it just snapped. And that is probably the most common complication of a water birth, is that the cord is short, um, and the baby is brought up really quick, and um, it snaps, and you have to just clamp it really quick to keep the baby from bleeding out. So to prevent that, I always encourage people and try to tell my moms, don't bring the baby up fast. Let me bring the baby up. You know, I might have to um, unwrap a cord or something and to try to bring it up slowly. And then if the cord is too short, then we just have the mom stand up. And that's one of the benefits of not having that epidural is mom can move. And so uh, moms will just stand up and then we can bring the baby out of the water. Um, so it's usually not uh, a problem. Um, I just had talked about labor slowing down for some people as one of the things that can happen. With these uh, soft-sided tubs like this one that uh, has the air in it, you have to be careful about jewelry and car keys and things like that rubbing up against it and busting the um, tub and make it puncture in a hole in it. Um, and then uh, the other issue that people occasionally have is they drop their phones or their cameras into the tub. And so, you know, that's one of those things we try to watch out for is that it gets wet around that tub. And so you have to keep things um, dried up and um, the floor surfaces um, so that you don't slip down. And then electronic things like that and electrical things out of the way so that you don't electrocute anybody and you don't damage your equipment. So as we come to the end of the presentation, and uh, you can see our picture of us, uh, our staff, fooling around one day in the tub as we were uh, taking some photos, um, I appreciate you guys uh, listening. Uh, to me and um, if you have uh, more questions I'm happy to answer them for you. Um, if you need more information about water birth um, another resource to look for is uh, Water Birth International. Um, they have a lot of, of resources for both uh, consumers and um, healthcare providers and they also provide some training. Um, and then um, Evidence-Based Birth is another um, organization. Um, Rebecca 
Decker is the uh, head of evidence-based birth and they uh, do uh, papers after looking at all the research on various topics so water birth is one of the topics that they've um, looked at all the research and come up with just a little summary of what the research says and then if you're not familiar with um, freestanding birth centers I encourage you to go to the American Association of Birth Centers and that's at birthcenters.org um, and you can find birth centers in your area if you're not from the Roanoke Valley um, then um, I would suggest uh, starting there uh, first and uh, because a lot of birth uh, centers are members of the American Association of Birth Centers so that might give you um, an idea of uh, at least where to start. Well, thank you guys for listening, and uh, I hope I will uh, be uh, hearing from some of you in the future. And uh, if we can help you with anything else, you just give us a, a call or uh, visit our website or our Facebook page. Thanks so much.